So what is up, Dan? Hey, I kind of feel like I'm sitting down with like Peter right now. There's like a mutual respect, but we're like on opposite sides because I feel like you're on like Team Bravo, and throughout the season, I would get like tagged in a bunch of your stories, being like, "This Dan guy's got to go. He's annoying." Da 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 da. But uh, thanks for covering the show. I appreciate <laughs> oh, it. Oh no, I hope you know that it's there's no no hard feelings, or I don't take any of this personal, and I obviously don't even know you. So no, no, <laughs> I'm I'm the same way. It's all fun. Yeah, no, I'm grateful that you've been so interactive and engaging with all of the content because I'm obsessed with this show, but it's great, right? They've, they've done a tremendous job. The cast is amazing. It's uh, it's fun, right? I want them to build a castle in like every state and <laughs> have like it doesn't even have to be filmed. But actually, if they film it, that could be like an add on that they charge. <laughs> but imagine like it's like a five-star resort and you get to play a game and if you get out you just hang out and like get served and stuff that's that's my dream I think you're onto something they actually did something like that for press in LA and I think a few people did it so it's like oh. you got to play with like Parvati or Trishel and yeah. oh my gosh I, would I know <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised with like how the show's going it'll it's gonna pop up somewhere it has to even if it's not like official like someone yeah. will do it yeah yeah it reminds me of like American Ninja Warrior when people would start building courses in their backyard. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> I very might similar. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question. Okay. Yeah. My big question right now is when you were in the circle of truth and you said you're a traitor and everyone starts cheering, what are your emotions in that moment? Uh, I'd say the emotions came when the chalk came out and like the bravo click is like like they're doing this and i'm like okay that's it's time to accept defeat because i like i know you don't watch the the cbs shows but like i don't i don't quit and but that to me was like the time to like take it in and so to me when i was in the circle the focus for me was like giving people their props like hey like you guys figured it out you got me and i was just really kind of taking it all and being grateful for the experience um, because like, you don't want to get got, got, but when you get got, it's like, you know, I, I have to respect it. Um, yeah. You kind of like nod. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was cool. And, um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it's like, cause that's a moment when I watched the first season, you're like, what is that person on the circle? Like going to say, what are they going to do? And to be, that was like a little surreal, you know, I, I can't yeah. lie. So you don't feel sad or depressed or anything when they're like, yay, he's gone. Like, I would probably cry. <laughs> no, not at all. It was actually like when I was, they like, cut it, but I'm walking and Peter like yells like, I love you, Dan. I'm like, it's all good. You know, like, cause, like, and I think the thing about this is that unlike probably a lot of shows you cover um, on Bravo is that I liked everyone. Even the people that like were coming after, like I genuinely, I liked Phaedra. And, and so most of the time when you play these shows, there's someone where you're like, okay, they're kind of an, I really liked everyone. So that was hard because I kind of used like, if someone's like rubbing me the wrong way, as like, oh, I got to get them out of here. There was really none of that because the cast is like, it's amazing. Like everyone's so cool. And, and I kind of feel like I was like lucky to be dropped in there with like all those huge personalities. So do you think that because you liked everyone that maybe you weren't as ruthless as you could have been? I think maybe, um, that's a good question. Um, I like, I like to play hard. Uh, you know, I, I guess that would come down to like turning on poverty or not. And for me, the way I look at this is the way I've done well in the past is like, I trust one person and I'm like, okay, I'm not going to turn this person. And it's worked for me every time. And I picked Parvati. And, and like you could say, in hindsight, the move is to get rid of Parvati, stay with Phaedra. But also I felt like I'd be like bled a slow death because they're coming after me next. Where like if I get rid of Phaedra, I'm like, oh, Dan's this great faithful. Like, you know, he got us a traitor. He couldn't be a faithful. Then you bring in another dude. Then you give him the other dude. And then I'm really, I'll see at the end game. Um, I, you know, I like the strategy. I just don't think I executed it very well at all. Well, speaking of strategy, I listened to your Q&A from last night and I 
I didn't realize that you were like a gamer gamer. I knew that you were a big brother, but I didn't know you're like on Twitch streaming. So I wanted to know what games do you play? The way like that I approach it to like kind of explain it to normies. So, so you would be like a normie because that's like a different section of the internet yeah. is like I, I run a broadcast from 930 to like 130 every weekday. And people will tune in. A lot of people that watch are like people at work that are on the second monitor. Yeah. So I'll use games as like the canvas. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really just kind of like, it's like a podcast pretty much. So yeah. um, people don't tune in because I'm really good at the games. They tune in because in that environment, there's like a lot of like swearing and like negativity and like horrible things will happen to me in those games. Like, and people will laugh and I'll just laugh along with it. So I think it's like a kind of like a little escapism for people to watch at work. Well, I don't know if at least the Bravo people are aware of this, that the gaming industry is way bigger than the TV, movie industries and music industries combined. And that's actually how I started. Like my path has been kind of interesting. But yeah. <laughs> I remember I was on Twitch first because I really love the game Just Dance. Yeah. Yeah, that's Have a big normie game. It? Uh, I played it with my nine-year-old niece, but I've never played it on camera. She loves it. Um, that's like a big normie game. So like in yeah. video games, there's like the normie games like that everyone's heard of. Yeah. And there's a lot of competition there. I'm in like, yeah. I play the games in the second tier because there's not as much competition. So tell me about those games. What? Yeah. What, what are those games and why do you like them? Yeah, so a lot of them are like are developed by independent developers and the genre that I play is, is called a roguelike. And basically what that is, is like you used to like, okay, you play Super Mario. It's like, you know, there's eight levels and you know, you fight Bowser. This is like, you know what the levels are, but every time you play it, it's different. So totally different things happen every time. You still know the path you have to go, but there's so much variation and randomness and crazy things that happen. It's like watching a uh your favorite reality tv show and you don't know what's going to happen you know it's housewives you know someone's going to fight you don't know who's going to fight but you know a fight's coming so it's you keep the watching traitors. yeah but it's, it's <laughs> different it's different than watching a movie like you watch a movie yeah. you know what happens you play yeah. mario you know what happens when you when i play these games it's like you know what things that are going to happen you don't know what's going to happen so like it makes for you know people that are into those games it's exciting yeah. to watch every time did you, by any chance growing up, did you ever get into those choose your own adventure books? You know, I, I remember going to the library and then getting those books. And then I tried to like start at like the winning page and then because I could never get to the, the right way. And I'm like, what a waste. I just spent all this time like reading and then I still get killed in the end. Yeah. those are, I don't know if they make those anywhere. That's a great question. Well, I think that our generation, because I think... You were born in 83, right? I was born in yeah. 82. So okay. our generation, I think, was raised. We were some of the first who, generation that was into any games at all. I mean, Atari yeah. was created when we were kids. So and that was really like the first at home gaming system. Right. And then it just yeah. from there. And I just find it interesting because before that, the only thing that you could really say was similar to that was, was like choose your own adventure books. Yeah, no, that, that's that's very true. I've never really drawn that correlation, but I wonder like that. So I have three little kids and I wonder if like now you make me want to like go on Amazon, see if I can buy one and like read one with my kids and have them make the decision, you know, because I, I just remember start, having so much. Oh my gosh, you could start your own line of choose your own adventure <laughs> books. There you go. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you the credit on the first page. Big thanks to Jenny Blaze for the idea. Hell yeah. Well, tell me about your family because the Bravo world, we don't know much about you. So we don't even know. Like, I'm well, shocked well, let me, I'm just let me, finding out about the game. Let, let me ask you this because okay. I've watched Bravo shows through osmosis through my wife. So my wife, like, oh, my loves watching Bravo shows. Like, when it's time to, you know, shut it down from that, she'll turn one on. So, like, I've, through osmosis, I've seen, like, New Jersey and Teresa and the table flip. And like, I've yeah. seen some Orange County and I know like Vicky and Tam, all, but like the fan base, mm -hmm. I am not familiar with, Yeah, but I am now. So yeah. how would, to someone who's new to the fan base and uh -huh. experiencing it for the first time, how would you describe it to someone that is? 
Oh, in the early I, I think the Bravo community is toxic AF, <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't need to be. And it depends on what platform you go on. So Twitter is probably the most toxic. I compare it like this. Instagram is your after work, after corporate work, happy hour, where you go to the nice bar or lounge that's nearby. Yeah. It's a little more I'm upscale. Fo I'm following you. Twitter is the dive bar that you go to afterward, where no one cares who you work for, what you do, where you come from. If you say something, they're going to just, they're going to react and they're going to react in their true form. And I feel like that's kind of the case with almost any fandom on these platforms, you know, like some are just more toxic than others. Same with yeah. TikTok. I thought TikTok was like for kids because I am a mother. I have three daughters oh. and I thought like, I didn't know adults were even on there. And so when I started posting Bravo stuff, I was like, oh my gosh, these people need therapy. Like this is out <laughs> of control, but not everyone is like that. And I have made really great connections and friends in this community. And it really is like, we have our own language, which I'm sure you do too, in your gaming community and big brother community as well. Very, okay. very much. I, I have to out myself as a um, huge Vanderpump Rules fan. So like, that's like the show, like some shows my wife will have on. I'll be like, okay, I'm kind of in. Tom Sandoval. Sandoval. So I'm going like to throw you. Though. So you, you were surprised that you didn't know I was on Twitch. Get ready for this one. I grew up with Kristen Doty. Shut the hell up. <laughs> so about like right when Vanderpump Rules, the first season came out, um, I was with my wife. We were in, in LA. I met with Kristen and Tom Sandoval at this bar. And like, I hadn't seen Kristen in like 20 years. And this was when Vine was out. Oh and God, Vine. We, were there, we were there for like 15 minutes. Kristen had a taser out and oh. she was getting... Tom to try and film her getting tased on Vine. And I was like, you know, things have come a long way since we grew up in Dearborn together. But like, oh I'm just telling God. you. I know. So there is your curveball. Um, oh my God. I, I love that story. Yeah. <laughs> so like I, uh, she texted me. I'm, I don't know if I might do her podcast. Like, I think we're going to, I'm going to do her podcast. Yes, but, you yeah. should. Oh yeah. my God. I love Kristen. And she has a new show coming out. The Valley. Yeah. Have you seen the or not no. the trailer or anything? No. What's the concept? <laughs> it's like former Who? former Vanderpump Rules people like Jax, Kristen, Brittany, some of their friends. I think it's like their life as parents. So probably you and I could relate to them. I yeah. mean, they are around our age, right? So yeah, no, and they have young I, kids. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I was actually I heard a rumor when I was going on to this season of Traders that Jax was going to be there. I'm like, yo, I hope he's there because like, you know, I've seen him and, and I, oh you know, I like his God. character on the show. Um, Jax is hilarious. And he was really good on House of Villains. <gasps> Would you ever go on House of Villains? I haven't seen it, but I had imagined that's probably like a little bit like Different. intense. It's like, isn't it like all fighting? But I don't want to get no. off Vanderpump Rose real quick. Can yeah, I just? Okay publicly state that my favorite character of all time on Vanderpump Rules is James Kennedy. Like uh, this dude, like things he says and moments he creates, I'm just like Citrus uh, Puss I, candle. <laughs> Citrus Puss. So, I love him. Schwartz uh, and Jamesies. Uh, no. I just like I like good TV, like entertaining yes. TV and he makes entertaining uh. TV. He, He'd be great on the trader, you know. Oh my God, I would love that. I would love that. So, if there is an opportunity to go again, would you go on the traders again? Um, you know, I had such a great experience. I would definitely consider it. You know, I think there's a lot of seasons to go before they do that because there was an article that came out with the head of casting, and she's like, "My phone's blowing up because I think people are seeing this season of the show." And like, how could you not expect on the next? season to see like a group of housewives like seeing Teresa on there like it's I just think it's going to continue to like keep getting bigger and bigger and, yes. and you know and especially with like the success it has now you're going to have like a lot of people who are like maybe I don't want to do it now they want to do the show because it's 
it's amazing. And, you know, yeah. No, I, and that's the thing. Like, I've always been aware of Bravo shows. The one I wish my wife would have watched it, that she didn't really watch is Atlanta because I feel like that would have that, that would have helped me tre- help me tremendously to learn. Yeah. I got to know like I got to know everyone personally in the house, but not so much like I what I do is I establish a personal relationship, then I'll go to gameplay. But I was just establishing those relationships. So I was talking to Phaedra and she's like, Hey, like I'm an entertainment lawyer. I like run funerals. I go, what do you mean? She's like, yeah, I put on these outfits and da, 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 da. I'm like, and she's like, and I'm a Ricky healer. I'm like, what's a Ricky healer. But like the lawyer part, I just really was like, I was so enamored with like, what do you mean you put on these funeral productions? And she's like, yeah, they're like, you know, Bentleys and Rolls Royces and, and, and dances. And I'm like, I was focused on that and not like, oh, I was, you know, an entertainment lawyer for Whitney Houston or whoever. And I'm like, I, I found that out really quickly at the round table, how good of a lawyer, you know, yeah, she is yeah, or was. So. Good. I think you did well. <laughs> I did I my think, best. <laughs> I think, I mean, well, I don't know, actually. I'm well, let me ask you this. Now. <laughs> As we wrap things up, who are you going to hate on now that I'm gone? That's, that's my concern. Yeah, I am concerned about that too, because I am open to hating more than one person, <laughs> as Kate Chastain says. Um, you know who I I think that Sandra should have been out from the beginning because, and I said this about you too. No offense, this is actually like yeah. respect to you, but because you're so your reputation is that you're so devious or diabolical. Even if you're faithful, I feel like you should go because that means at any point, if you do become a traitor, you are eventually going to turn on us. Well, I mean, that's a great point, Jenny. And like, (laughs) I agree, like Sandra is two-time winner survivor. That's so hard. But you have to remember, do you think anyone from Bravo is watching CBS television and watching Survivor. No, they have have no clue who we are. Yeah, but and I I don't watch that either. But just from reputation alone, Janelle, you and Harvey and Sandra, those would be my top. There was a little bit of that, but like they they're like they're they're doing their housewife thing. You know, they they were you know they're sharp, man. They were sharp. But um, yeah, Jenny, thanks so much for having me on. Thank uh, you. This thanks for covering the show. Great. Absolutely. Are you still going to continue to cover the show, the show on your podcast? Um, yeah. I mean, I think the people that are not mad at me, I will would love to have on. Um, and then, you know, so we'll, we'll see. So Wait, who's mad at you? I mean, Phaedra is not thrilled with me by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm sure bygones will be bygones. I hope. I don't know. You know the housewives better than I do, but. Well, I'm looking forward to the reunion. (laughs) I'll see you, Jenny. 